My dad did 22 years active duty and uh, in the Air Force, and we lived all over the world, uh, traveling around, and, and it's just really all I ever knew, and I knew I wanted to uh, serve in that way, especially being in high school when 9-11 happened, and so I went to the Air Force Academy for four years, and that led to my commission. After shadowing physical therapy, I kind of decided that this is the path that I that was best for what I enjoyed, and so I was fortunate enough to go to the Army Baylor program after the Air Force Academy. After that, I was selected to go to South Korea for a year. Yeah, so Josh emailed me, and it was a unique email because it came from uh, South Korea. He explained how he was currently on deployment and that he had recently been accepted into the Department of Defense's program to go back and receive his PhD. But there was one catch, he only had three years, and that was something he was really upfront about. But a number of the schools I called, they just said it's impossible. You've had other people from the military who've come back to the University of Kentucky, and particularly into the College of Health Sciences, who've been very successful, and who've done it in three years. So I knew there was a track record. So I came up with this idea that even though he was not formally enrolled in our program yet, yeah, that we could start having FaceTime meetings together with him in South Korea and myself here in Kentucky. With the time difference, it either meant that one of us was up early in the morning or late at night. He was able to come and hit the ground running. Within six weeks or so, I had my first draft of my IRB submitted, and I was already starting collecting data by December of my first year. It was stressful at times, trying to balance all the patients and coursework and the, all the, you know, just daily student requirements, but really thankful for it. In San Antonio, in the earlier stages of my career, we did a rotation at the Center for the Intrepid. Um, that's where a lot of the wounded warriors go after they're injured in Iraq or Afghanistan. And a lot of these guys did really poorly, understandably, because of the trauma of the injury, but also just the psychological influence of, of seeing their best friends injured or, or killed in action. And so that's kind of what my dissertation is, is looking at those uh, psychosocial factors uh, early on after injury that influence who develops chronic pain and disability. So I have recruited 122 people to participate in the study. We've tracked everybody through six months so far and the most consistent uh, predictor of who's going to have really bad pain and physical function outcomes at six months is self-efficacy. Basically the person's confidence that they can work through an injury, their belief that they can kind of return to full activity, despite the circumstances that they have been presented with. He's taken individuals who have had a traumatic injury and tracked the development of chronic pain over the years. So his work is really applicable to the military, but it's also very applicable to the Commonwealth. Orthopedic injuries, uh, there's about a 50% conversion rate to developing chronic pain and to the use of opioids. So Josh's work will give us really important insights for non-pharmacological treatments that we can administer to people before they develop chronic pain, both in the military and outside the military. So I'll defend next spring, and then it's looking like I'll be going to the Army Baylor Physical Therapy Program to teach and do research. I will definitely be continuing collaborating with Dr. Noren and Dr. Matazuski. Dr. Matazuski in orthopedic surgery and myself were involved in the consortium called Metric Slaves Traumatic Injuries within the military and outside of the military. Having Josh here, having an actual service member who's treated individuals wounded in, in combat has just been really important for us. The military system of medicine is different than the civilian. And so that kind of cross-pollination of ideas, I think has been really enriching for our undergraduate students as well as with our graduate students. You know, when you're in the military setting, you're, you're leading a bunch of really solid people, but it's a, it's a different scenario than when I get to study full time. It'll be good to go back, but it's also going to be kind of sad to say bye to UK. You know, we pushed people in our labs to really take risk and to try new and bold ideas. And he definitely has done that. And his work is certainly on the cusp of providing some really important insights into a very vexing multimodal problem. So I'm, I'm for one really excited to see his, the results and see his future career trajectory. He, he's on track to do some amazing things both inside and outside of the military.